Welcome to Real Physics. Today I will talk about Hans Reisner. Who is Hans Reisner? There isn't even a decent picture on the internet of him. Well, to be fair, there is a Reisner Nordstrom metric, which is known among experts on general relativity, but this is just a tiny little thing with respect to the huge insight he had in 1915. And what do I mean with understanding gravity? I made a video about this one year ago with the somehow clickbaity title The Most Fundamental Problem of Gravity is Solved. And indeed, this means unifying inertia with gravity. And that was achieved by a fantastic cosmologist, Denis Schama, in 1953. But you know, Reisner was almost three decades earlier. Well, and who pointed me to the paper by Sharma. I knew Sharma's paper, but this particular intriguing part had escaped my attention. And thanks to Jonathan Fay, a scholar from Bristol, he had written a paper about Sharma's research. I realized what a profound result regarding gravity that was. And in the aftermath, we held a little conference in Bonn. You may want to watch uh, Jonathan Faith talk and also Dennis Brown's talk. Very interesting. These two very smart guys now continue to research on this topic and found that the key idea was already expressed in that old paper by Reisner. It's not yet published, so be careful. I give you the link also in the description. And well, this is the original paper by Hans Reisner about in German about the possibility of deriving gravity as a direct consequence of the relativity of inertia. And before we go into more detail, let me just open a parenthesis in history because I just don't get it. I just don't understand why for decades now people are talking about all this nonsense of string theory explaining gravity and supergravity and all this mathematical science fiction which has nothing to do with anything fundamental and at the same time people don't look at the most profound riddles of physics which is why gravity exists at all why does the gravitation constant the value it has how is gravity related to inertia? Yeah, I really wonder why modern physics doesn't understand the significance of the problem. And one reason might be this attitude as it is represented by one of the most influential physicists of the 20th century, Richard Feynman. And he recounts a conversation when he was a child with his father. Listen. When I pull the wagon, the ball rolls to the back of the wagon. It rushes to the back of the wagon. And when I'm pulling along and I suddenly stop, the ball rolls to the front of the wagon. I said, why is that? And he said, that, he says, nobody knows. He said, the general principle is that things that are moving try to keep on moving. And things that are standing still tend to stand still unless you push on them hard. And he says, this tendency is called inertia, but nobody knows why it's true. So, you know, as a child already, he knew that this is a deep problem. And he was a smart guy. And then later he had all the opportunities to, to deepen that, to go into that, to read about everything what has been written by Reisner and Schama and Einstein about the problem, but he didn't do it. That just doesn't go into my head. I don't understand. And I think it's a consequence of that superficial kind of post-war culture, as a result of which we have all this nonsense spread about gravity and gravitons and whatever. I think this is a general problem in modern physics, but I know I'm ranting and I'm deviating. Let's go to Reisner's paper here. Look at this. This is the German original and gravitation would then be interpreted as an immediate and necessary consequence of the relativity of acceleration. The identity between inertial and gravitational mass would be taken for granted. That means explaining the equivalence principle. And now even maybe more interesting, he considers also the value of the gravitational constants. Look at this and you find here a formula that includes the gravitational potential and some term in the numerator related to the speed of light, presumably. And this is intriguingly related to the coincidence of the gravitational constant being related to the mass distribution in the universe, as formulated in the famous paper by Denis Schama. But I always thought that Erwin Schrödinger in 1925 was the first one to mention this coincidence. But now it turns out that Reisner, even 10 years before, had this insight. And savor that, the cosmology didn't exist at the time. I mean, Hubble was in 1923 that 
at least Schrödinger could suspect that there was something beyond our galaxy and that makes the coincidence more likely. But Reisner had a similar insight from pure thought. That's huge. Yeah, and of course the equivalence of inertial and gravitational mass was the beginning of general relativity discovered by Einstein in 1907, I mean the equivalence principle. And of course this is a huge insight and Einstein has to be given credit for having shaped these terms. And by the way, my favorite idea of Einstein is then that he came up with a variable speed of light in 1911 as a consequence of that equivalence principle. But that's again another issue I don't want to deepen today. However, one should you realize, and that's what also Jonathan and Dennis point out in their paper, the equivalence principle as formulated by Einstein is not a true explanation why these two concepts are equivalent. So I think it's really an accomplishment that they found out this old paper by Reisner. Not only to be historically fair, but I think it gives you an entirely different understanding if you follow the lines and the ideas and how they were interrelated at the time and who followed up later. That's really interesting. They did a great research in that direction. I can only re recommend the paper. I think I will go into detail later, but yeah, this just came out. And one thing they also found out a very interesting paper by a certain Cook Air Force Weapons Laboratory. Doesn't he have anything better to do? Well, gravity and inertia is certainly more fundamental. A very smart guy, however, who also explicitly says general relativity is certainly not capable of providing a more fundamental understanding of the principle of equivalence, for no theory can explain its postulates except by argument in circling. So this is not to dismiss Einstein's finding, Einstein's formulation of the equivalence principle, but you have also to realize that it does not provide a real explanation, which can only be found along the lines of, well, Schama and maybe even earlier Reisner. Well, I'll tell you today something about my personal focus of interest. Here are some more things you can follow up if you want. I have an interview with Andreas Sis, who did very intriguing work on Mach's principle as well. I think there might be even a relation to quantum inertia of Mike McCulloch. I'm not sure yet. And of course, if you want to dive deeper, uh, you have to study Newton's bucket and Mach's principle, Mach's famous critique of Newton's buckets. And there are excellent videos like... Uh, see the video on dialect channel or also see the pattern. And of course, also this is related to Foucault's pendulum. And well, study also the original paper by Denis Schama, which clearly says that there is still something missing in general relativity, something which is not explained. The coincidence of rest frames, which is kind of equivalent to relating inertia to gravity and the value of the gravitational constant. So don't believe at this point what is told everywhere that general relativity, well, it's fantastic, it's very precise and it's intriguing, but it's not the last word. There is something left to discover in the very foundations of gravitational physics. Well, and last not least, we should mention here Ernst Mach, the famous Viennese philosopher, who already in 1883 suspected that inertia has its origin in all masses in the universe. Consequently, also gravity has its origin in all masses in the universe. Somehow a precursor of that idea of the equivalence principle. And as a consequence, even if Mach couldn't arrive at such a conclusion because there was no cosmology, there were no observations, well, but the gravitational constant g is a function of the mass distribution of the universe, that would be a true quantitative realization of Mach's principles, which is of course backed by the data by this intriguing coincidence. Also mentioned by a ingenious physicist Robert Dickey, I made a couple of videos about him and his research about Mach's principle. And well, we still are far from understanding gravity. We have Newton at the center here, Einstein in this rotating bucket struggling with his understanding on gravity and then Ernst Mach out there in the universe who might be the key to the true understanding and certainly Denis Schama and also Hans Reisner have made great contributions to that. To conclude, don't get lost into the everyday news of science what's interesting. I mean it's interesting what the newest telescopes show you but don't get 
don't get involved in partial problems as Wittgenstein says, but always take flight to where there is a free view over the whole single grade problem, even if that view is not yet clear. This is my personal approach, how I got interested in this stuff. This is an early paper on the subject and this is my book, which relates variable speed of light to the Einstein 1911 first idea of general relativity. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like it. And if you're interested in that kind of fundamental problems of physics, subscribe to this channel.